All right, everyone, welcome back. This is Tech Type episode number 89. How fast can the internet screw up your life? Recorded on April 27th, 2017. Uh, I've been a bit slow getting the episodes out produced lately here, and because I've been really, really busy, but uh, good busy, um, I'm working on several opportunities, everything looking really good, and I'm pretty happy because I've been, between my, myself and my mom and some other folks, we've been working on some projects for literally years, and they're all, all, all kind of starting to come together here, so, um, so anyway, a lot of hard work, and I'm very appreciative of it, so it's, it's all coming to fruition here. So, now, in between things, uh, especially last weekend, I watched what's called the Battle of Berkeley, four or three or four, or something like that, live through several live feeds and i felt like i was literally there because it just so many things going on seeing action from from several different perspectives and i want to talk about something that happened um which could be concerning to my audience so anyway a little recap um episode 88 was five things business owners should uh, should not do online so we'll cover several things that you should as business owners shouldn't do online and uh got some feet got some pretty good feedback so far and it looks like I'm going to have to add a few more things on that list here in, the, in a follow-up episode. So uh, if you're a business owner and you haven't checked that episode out yet, it would be probably good for you. Um, and so you avoid these little ca uh, catastrophes that other business owners uh, tend to run into. So that's episode number 88. Now, before we get into the today's topic, let's go through some announcements and some details here. Uh, as usual, thank you for listening and watching. I uh, very much appreciate it. This is why I keep on doing these episodes, keep on doing this stuff here, uh, the YouTube channel, as well as the podcast show to help you folks out out there. So, uh, and that's why I got a major sponsor too. So I appreciate this all this all you guys for, for my success so far. So now, if you're listening on iTunes or an, an Android podcast directory, please do me a big favor, rate my show, submit a review. Uh, really appreciate that because helps my show grow, helps me get get some recognition over there. If you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe to my channel, leave some comments, some kudos, some questions. Greatly appreciate that too. If you need to find me or show somehow, some way, you can go directly to, to the website primeconcepts.net. That's P R I M E C O N C E P T S dot N E T. There's links to the podcast show and lots of great stuff on there. Uh, lots of free tutorials on business internet related topics. And my favorite one, free and almost free ways to advertise your business online. By the way, we're going to do an update on that fairly soon here. So we'll keep in touch with you on that. Either way, please pass the word. Uh, you know, share the episode. Tell other people about the show, the podcast show, YouTube channel, and about me and what, what we're trying to do here. So greatly appreciate all that. little legal disclaimer. Uh, the products mentioned in this show and other episodes of Tech Talk with Dan Harley could be paid as a affiliate commission, a promotional commission, or the liking by the product or service provider. In other words, I just might try to sell you something. So while we're at it, uh, I want to make sure, while I'm just trying to sell you something, let's take advantage of my sponsor here. Now, if you don't back up your computer and important data, uh, you can realize losing it in a, you know, literally a split second. That's happened to me a few times. So, you know, your accounting files, personal documents, family pictures, all this stuff. You know, we keep all this stuff on our computers and don't realize how critical, how, how critical they are until they're gone, you know. And um, that's why it, the challenge with a lot of folks out there, it is, it's, uh, it can be, it used to be very cumbersome trying to put some type of backup system together. But that's where Carbonite comes in. Uh, Carbonite is a cloud backup service. It is renowned for being very easy to install and very easy to use. Literally about two, three steps. No technical skills needed. And it backs everything on your, on your computer automatically. You don't have to even think about it. It just does it. Okay. Uh, it also has high quality encryption for your files and data. It's, it's very well protected from uh, and secured. Uh, those of you who are in, in the medical field or legal field, you'll be happy to know that uh, that uh, Carbonite has the HIPAA compliance, other compliance issues squared off for that too. So, uh, no worries, no hassles, very affordable. Uh, that's uh, less than 20 cents a day to back up and protect your computer. So, we partner with Carbonite to allow me to make this this special offer here. Um, you can try Carbonite out, out, Carbonite out for free at primeconcepts.net slash link slash Carbonite. That's primeconcepts.net slash link slash Carbonite. You'll find the link at, uh, at primeconsoles.net if you don't remember all that. Uh, check uh, check it all out, and I greatly appreciate that. That helps me keep the lights on, so to speak. So, anyway, um, the 
issue here is the topic is how fast can the internet screw up your life? And this has to do with the uh, issue with Battle of Berkeley for lack of better terms. It happened last weekend on the 15th. Um, now, I receive my news sources from several sources. Uh, Twitter and and, um, and uh, Reddit and uh, other, but several other places. So Anyway, as I was doing some work on a Saturday here, I received lots of big things. That something was going down in Berkeley, and I uh, apparently had Tifa and Trump protesters were kind of butting heads over there, and it turned out to, actually it turned out to be Antifa protesting against pretty much everybody else over there, including the liberals. But anyway, it started getting pretty violent, and i uh i've actually jumped on uh, thanks to internet i actually jumped on several live streams and it seemed like i was right there because i and at, right, right there are several different spots i was watching from several different angles several different um, situations and one incident caught my attention there apparently was this antifa guy and how i knew this was this guy was black it was in, in, in a black clothing and, and a black hoodie and and had a mask on and, and glasses and um, he hit this guy over the head with a bike lock. And I happened to have seen that light caught. It was happened so quick. Uh, split second, something came down. And, and, and the guy uh, 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 came out of the crowd and just hit, hit this guy in the head. And they just disappeared. And all of a sudden, this guy's on the ground, grabbing his head. He's, he's got bloody and all this stuff. And I really couldn't tell who it was because, in, in fact, we watched I watched the um, replays for that particular situation it was within a second you couldn't tell it was wore a mask and hoodie and essentially disappeared so now i want to ad lib on this here this episode is not about the political beliefs or political issues that's happening in berkeley this has to do with how fast this person's life was turned upside down from this but one particular situation here so it started from an obscure split second video specific second of the video and um the problem is, is really the ease of finding anything and everything about someone online. So what happened here was the viral, the video went viral, um, and it was posted on 4chan. Um, it's a little, that it, it's a, well, again, you can call it a somewhat gray area. Anyway, 4chan, if you know about it, you can. A lot of people can uh, understand. They're a, a kind of anonymous started there, and all this stuff here. So I mean, the members in 4chan started to tear this all apart. So they called they called this thing called weaponized autism. So they found the video of uh, videos of the same guy hitting others with the bike lock. So they they just like I say tear apart for all kinds of different angles here. Found other videos of the same situation. The guys hitting 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 people with the bike lock, and then finally found an unmasked picture of this person. And they started backtracking information from that. Through Twitter and Facebook, and we searched Twits and friends and social associates. Really started tearing this guy's tearing this guy apart. In a very short time, we found out you know not only who this guy is, where he worked, where he lived, um, his car, and it turned out to be um, yeah, he turned out to be frankly it turned out to be a professor of a nearby college. At the same time, uh, there's other uh, people on 4chan that was um, collected videos and pics the pictures of his assault. Um, all this information was sent to this person's employer, as well as sending be saying the the Berkeley police, and um, this guy very soon found out that quote unquote 4chan was after him, and uh, he was literally afraid for his life. So he closed all his social networking accounts, but it's basically too late when he did that because everybody pretty much um, uh, what's well, called doxed him, and um, changed his cell phone number. He uh, went out staying as his friends for the time being, and ironically, uh, his where he stayed was found out. Um, and still, more information was being collected and sent to Berkeley police, and uh, to the point that the victim a few days ago decided to go and press charges. So, this man's life has essentially become public knowledge in less than five days, in about two, three days actually. And um, life is new is essentially just over. Okay, he, thousands of people know who he is. Uh, he probably not safe for him to be seen in public right now, at least. 
um, decent chance his job, his job would be terminated and it'd be very dangerous for him to just go home. So, um, adding to this, his connections to Antiva, his friends there, um, who are also connected to others involved with the conflicts that day, they've been found out. Uh, many hundreds of Antifa members have been discovered. Um, what was supposed to be an, an organization whose membership was to be intentionally kept to be secret is now revealed to the public. So, pretty bad. Okay? So, um, so how does all happen? From a, I'm meaning from a technical perspective. Well, uh, this is what I call it, uh, crowdsourcing. Okay? The way like hundreds, of, hundreds of these 4chan members uh, work collectively to find all this information. Um, this leverage means things are found faster, things are collected faster, and resolved faster. Uh, and um, the, this this information that they're collecting, this is not hacking into some secret CIA or 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 FBI computer. This is just public knowledge being collected uh, off of uh, off of Twitter, off of Facebook, off of whatever is out there. Um, and it's just a matter of having a lot more people looking for it, for, looking for stuff, collecting stuff. And uh, essentially working as a team, ironically. Um, at any measure, this is an incredible feat of CSI, for like, from my perspective. Um, it was amazing how fast, for me, how fast from basically an obscure video, how this person was found out, how, how, how his, he was revealed, his, not only his name, his entire life, his friends, his, his business, his... His employer, his everything, was just opened up like a, a can opener to a can. Um, crazy. This is crazy stuff. Uh, now, granted, I am not in favor of what this guy did. In fact, I think he was a... <laughs> um, I'm not going to get... Um, I would strongly suggest you do it and do it again. I do not... I don't think the violence on from both sides was, was necessary. Uh, it's obviously there is a lot of tension there, but... This again. This was not this in, in this uh, episode that when I'm talking about it really has nothing to do with the political aspect of it. So anyway, a solution: how to avoid this from happening to you? Okay. Well, um, but in blindly, don't hit people over the head with a bike lock at a public uh, protest would probably be a good thing to start off. So uh, now, granted, what happened was unusual but not unique. Okay. Um, odds of this happening to even even just the people that are we're at. Antifa people at that event, okay? Uh, all this happened to individuals directly involved with the, at Berkeley were very, very low. I mean, let's say a handful of these people were, you know, singled out or docked, for lack of better terms, uh, out of hundreds who were protesting. Um, many essentially escaped this menagerie. and But however, uh, um, their, knowledge, th their involvement could be uh, revealed to the public. So, there could be repercussions, repercussions for this. So, um, I just kind of lay this all out, and but um, it also adds out here too, uh, from this guy being doxed, which is what the term, uh, kind of the slang term, in technique, technical slang term is being used. It's very difficult to prevent being doxed if you've been targeted. Okay, there's right now. If you think about yourself, and even oh, look at me, there's already read really too much information out there. Uh, on me, um, if somebody decided to dox me, so I'm concerned, obviously. So, um, you know, how do I avoid this? How do I re recommend other people avoid it? Well, first of all, uh, be careful of public conflicts. Probably a good thing. <laughs> Excuse me. Could be a, a good start. You know, it, it, uh, what you do in public could be a reaction to what you say or do. Uh, it could be much more than expected. I, you know, as for this gentleman, this person who, you know cracked uh, his bike his bike lock over some innocent guy's head here I he, he, fates assume he expected to just kind of dis disappear um, in, into the anomalous of living there and it turned out is isn't quite the opposite there so I'm sure he wish he didn't do it um, so um, now as a business owner because this is a business related uh, uh, podcast a YouTube channel here you know how could this happen to you? And obviously, this is a political, personal thing here. Well, um, if the, quite often I see uh, business owners uh, with, let's say, with, with 
have uh, issues with their irate right customers. Um, you know, you have the people who, who are you know, all these, um, like for instance, Google Places and Yelp and stuff like that, where people, customers uh, uh, leave um, um, their reactions or, or, or the reviews of, of, of businesses. And quite often you get some people who are pretty upset and they leave a negative review. And a natural reaction many is to counter that. And quite often, business business owners counter incorrectly and and escalate the issue rather than um, diffuse it. So um, it could ease this stuff here could easily get out of control. Just you know, somewhat similar to what happened to this bike lock guy. Um, but it's also easier to take the high road in all the situations. Uh, you know, you do your best to. Diffuse a conflict if possible. Just plain be nice. You know, there's no sense of if there's an, if there, you know, I always try, try to try to do the nice thing first, and then if that doesn't work, I'll always work to go to something else. So, so anyway, um, so anyway, if this something like this happens to you, where as you're getting conflict with a customer or a or a um, or or a um, competitor, you know, it, if you have issues with that, this is one of those things I had had I, I do handle. I do help with some of my clients. I handle a lot of case case by case situations. Obviously, there uh, there's no quickie cutter way of handling it, but uh, we do handle it. So um, I can probably help you guys out there if you have if you're running one of these issues. And basically, what you can do is take up a, offer a free consultation, you know, and we can see what's going on and take the best options to you know help fix those situations. So anyway, um, I think I'm gonna leave it as that. And by the way, if you know contact us, go to primecons.net. Email info at primecons.net or call me at 760-247-4814. So anyway, um, I hope this episode brings uh, more reasons why we all need to really, frankly, get along. Okay, I firmly believe that all of us, despite our political differences, and there's been quite a bit going on since the last election, uh, by far the most tumultuous election cycle I've ever seen, there's a lot more we have in 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 common than we have in differences and we need to look more at the commonalities so we can get along better okay so you know life is too short we shouldn't have to sit there and and, and argue about stuff that really if you take a step back is probably less meaningful than most people think so uh, anyway i hope this episode you know touch people heart whatever and we'll go from there anyway um that's gonna be the that's that's it for this episode so thank you guys for watching and listening and good luck and Godspeed to your online success.